Thank you for coming, Mrs. De Arruda. I'm very glad and honored to speak uh, with you about your work today. Actually, I've always been fascinated by the profession of the curator and its ability to create a kind of connection between the artist and the audience. You have worked in several countries such as Cuba, Brazil, Germany, Norway and Great Britain too. Now we would like to know what circumstances led you to become a curator in Berlin? Yeah. So thank you, first of all, thank you very much for the invitation and the opportunity to talk a bit about these activities developed in more than 20 years. So actually it's a, a long journey. Uh, becoming a curator in Berlin, I've been, I'm from Sao Paulo, living in Berlin since 27 years. And I came the first time to Berlin even before 87 because of the German language. Mm -hmm. So it always started with uh, learning the language still abroad in Brazil and then coming to Germany to really experience this and to have a closer relation to the culture. And at that point, then I decided to come to Berlin and to study art history. So at the beginning of 89, I was back in Berlin to start the studies. And uh, well, Berlin, beginning of 89, we had no idea that some months later the wall would come down. And this, uh, the fall of Berlin Wall was very important for the development of the current uh, historical, political and economical development. It was a kind of domino effect, yeah. which reached East Europe, Asia and everything. So then, the begin with um, Berlin, it was because of the language, its own culture, and then the whole development and the new platform that we had after the fall of the Berlin Wall. Okay. So it is well known the, that the South American heart does not respect completely the German cultural standards. In your opinion, what is the best way to bring German people closer to South American culture and art? And do you believe that promoting Latin American art represents a tougher task when compared to the promoting of other cultures, such as the European, for example? Yes, um, it's all a work in progress. You can never say, okay, we arrive at a certain point with this international cultural exchange the platforms, they are changing every day, and the necessities too. But it does not mean, for instance, right now with the difficulties we have with Arabic countries and calling the attention to that region, it does not mean that we should forget other parts of the world. The whole world is connected itself. I mean, European, European culture, uh, being in Europe, it's a kind of um, pleasure it's such a strong culture, and we have uh, it reflects in South America, very visible, because of the heritage, because South America was a colo colony of Portugal, France, Spain. So we still have a very close relation to that. What we find in South America is a kind of development of a certain new culture created on the top of its own identity, and the influence of Europe, all this mix is very singular. So the South American culture, it has uh, multi-faces. So it's easy to put that in dialogue with the European or even with the Asian culture or the North American country, a culture itself, because it's mixed by itself. So it's a task, it's not easy, but it's not that difficult. So. You have worked in the field of arts and culture for quite a long time now. Could you tell us more about your past work experiences and the, the different challenges a curator must face in South America and Europe? I mean, um, the curator in general, depending on the, on the level you want to work. If you want to work in a very international level, you have, it's the same if you're creating exhibitions in Europe or creating in South America or in Asia. It's the same if you were researching in these countries. But a curator working in this international platform has to have different tasks and experience too. Because for sure we see incredible context that we would like to share or to create a much more intensive dialogue between exactly these very different cultures. 
or just to create a dialogue to know how close are them to each other or not. But uh, a curator has, well, to research a lot and to see as much as he can before bringing to the audience uh, mm -hmm. uh, a project, an exhibition, the responsibility is very big. And not only this, we have also to know how to work interna internationally through different codes. For instance, working in China, even the artists, they say, okay, we have the official and the non-official face. Working in Cuba, I mean, there are some kind of structures that you have to know how to deal with the artists, how to communicate inside and outside. And on the top of this, you have to find the right partners to present this whole research. You have to find the institutions, you have to find the sponsors, and then also uh, to create the staff and colleagues to deal with the huge international logistic. Because it's not that so easy to bring from A to B a kind of big exhibition. But it means it's not easy, but it's not impossible. And just one example, uh, during 2011-12, I presented in Brazil a big exhibition about Indian art. Okay. From antique to the contemporary, the antique we had from European museums, it was much easier than bringing the antique from India, and the contemporary art we had from India. It was a traveling exhibition in Rio de Janeiro, Sao Paulo and Brasilia for one year. The Brazilian audience was so excited to know about Indian culture and art. At the end, we had 1.2 million visitors. Wow. So it was a huge success of audience. We were very happy with this. And then you can see how big is the responsibility when you have the focus on this kind of international relationship. Another question for you is how does your typical work relationships develop, meaning what steps occur between the initial discovery of an artist's work and the realization of an exhibition? What is behind the creation of an exhibition and who else works on it besides the curator? Yeah, well, sometimes you see or you meet some artists and you fell in love immediately. You say, oh my God, I would like to present this in different contexts, different contexts. Uh, you usually then keep this in mind. It's not so easy due to the points that I just said. You have to find the institutions, the sponsors, and they take care of the whole logistic. But uh, first of all is to see and research and try to think which is the context. You have to contextualize the projects. You have to contextualize the artists. You cannot just think, okay, this is beautiful, this is great, this is exciting but you have to find the right way and the right place to present this work. So this is the second part of the research, which follow you to different partners and contexts. Sometimes uh, I visit one artist and I wait five years for the, fir for the first exhibition. And sometimes we are researching with such a context. For, in for example, I collaborate with the Havana Biennial since 96 as um, advisor or guest curator. And uh, you know, Cuba, it was just this big boom one year ago, two years ago. We do not know how it will develop right now. But last year, under this perspective that Cuba is changing and we have to make a kind of approach, uh, I, had, I was invited by the minister um, Steinmeier, for instance, here in Germany before his first trip to Cuba. I was invited to his cabinet to talk about the possible approach between Germany and Cuba. And then uh, one of the points that I highlighted was the exchange and exhibitions that we should create between both countries. And this happened because we organized one exhibition this year at the Kunsthalle Rostock with Cuban artists. We had the chance of presenting 60 artists dealing with different medias because we really wanted to intensify this dialogue. And the Rostock, very special, because the Kunsthalle Rostock, it's a building, it's the only museum built in the prior GDR. And it was created for a biennial, which does not exist anymore. Okay. And the Rostock had always a big relation to Cuba through their labor and port, the whole products from Cuba used it to come to East Germany through Rostock. 
and Fidel Castro was twice there. So we thought, okay, so this is the context to start bringing closer Germany and Cuba. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. So as you well know, the ICD strongly believes that in a world based in intercultural, international relations, the dialogue represents one of the most important tools to create a greater trust within people from different cultures. In this regard, can you mention an episode that has seen you involved uh, in an intercultural dialogue? Yeah, well, all the time we are creating intercultural dialogue and the culture itself, especially visual art, it's used as instrument for the international communication, international politics. Usually when a country is, decides to create a more intensive international dialogue, they start supporting their artists and presenting them abroad. This is part of this intercultural dialogue. Uh, we just have to take care so that the art stays by itself and is not manipulated by other interests. But dealing as a curator automatically you are creating this intercultural dialogue, especially working in international field yeah. and bring different countries together. And uh, for instance, lots of my research, we, I mean, based in Berlin, Berlin is a great platform because you have here many different international artists working here and living or presenting their works. But um, part of this research that I do also and intensify more and more is the intercultural dialogue between the South and the BRICS countries, like Brazil, because I came from Brazil, and then we have India, China, uh, Russia, and so on. It's all very important. It's very important to keep on moving this. It's a work in progress, and we see the world can change very, very quick. So it's very important that we start and then we continue this without leaving apart this dialogue. And what is very, very relevant for this is that the artists, they are protagonists of our history and they are the ones who give face and voice to the, to the daily life, depending on where they live, depending on where they work. So they have a big responsibility also in this context. And we curators, we support them as far as we can. Yeah. And according to you, can cultural diplomacy represent an instrument actually to strengthen the relationship between Germany and South America. Yes, and one example was this exhibition of Cuban art that we presented this year yeah. in, in Rostock at the Kunsthalle. This was uh, a kind of a very important approach because, uh, well, we hope that Cuba will keep on developing to a certain openness, to a certain democracy. and. Uh, the artists, they are read for this, the population read for this, and then that's why this kind of a cultural dialogue is also very relevant. Or instance, for instance, even if we talk about other countries like China, we know the potential they have in the economies. But uh, their culture is very important also. That is a way we have to start to understand, especially what we do not understand. We should try to come closer. We do not have to understand it completely and at the same time immediately. But we have to start, we have to pay attention to the reality around us. Not just in front of us, but to open a bit more the yeah, perspective. Agree with you. So what is your personal vision on the role of cultural diplomacy today? Oh, it's getting more and more important, more and more necessary. I just came right now from a symposium uh, happening right now. In the, we just had the talk, uh, the speech of the, our Minister of Culture, Monica Grutters. Mm -hmm. And uh, for instance, she was celebrating today to, with the audience that she could uh, even improve her budget for next year. And it's really important, this, because the culture is the beginning of understanding. If you do not understand the culture, if you do not have the content, if you do not have a culture, it doesn't matter if you have a new car, new clothes, a new house. The culture is part of, the, it's essential as part. So everybody should have access to this. So would you like to add something that I did not ask to you? 
No, I would li just like to, to add, um, thank you again so very much for this invitation and for this one open platform. And uh, I am sure that this cultural diplomacy is part of the development of the society. And we really need it in the daily life, not just uh, on the high level, but to try to bring it to a more uh, a trivial context so that everybody knows more about this, especially by the development of the politics nowadays, we should try to bring everything a bit closer and to develop more and more uh, direct dialogue. Okay, so thank you again for coming here today and I'll personally send you the article that I'm going to write these days. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you.